on Tuesday. I'll just I'll just wait for them to finish. Hey, it's me. Okay, that's what happens with live videos. Um, we are still talking today and next week about uh, motivating women um, and how that might differ or how their environments might differ for the female brain to the male brain. And today, my tip is to understand anxiety from a female perspective. And when I say things like, you know, put their worries to rest, I want you to be really careful not to just dismiss what you don't understand. So your job's not to make it better. It's to understand that these anxieties and these pressures exist for the person in front of you um, and that they're more likely to exist in a female body, um, in Australia anyway. <laughs> okay, so just to get started, if we recap what we've already talked about when it comes to motivating women, in particular, the fact that they lack confidence, not competence, um, and that they feel like they don't belong in the weights room, then if we add a healthy dose of society's gendered expectations, we have a recipe for, you know, uncertainty, like what is a female body supposed to look like? What is a woman who exercises supposed to look like? Um, these pressures are subliminal in a lot of um, situations, but they're constant and they're sort of bombarding us from all directions. We've got to be this skinny and this small and have this much muscle definition, but not too much, you know, and it can be very overwhelming, particularly if you're not currently exercising and you're entering a gym for the first time. Now, in research done on female athletes and sportswomen, they experience much higher rates of anxiety and worry than their male counterparts. And bear with me because I am aware that athletics and um, athletic populations and sports is a different environment to just run-of-the-mill general populations gym environment. But there are some really important crossovers that we need to understand um, for our female clients um, to fully feel comfortable and motivated in a gym environment. So, female sportswomen and athletes experience much higher rates of anxiety than their male counterparts. And there is variance from sports to sports and obviously amongst individuals, I get that. Um, but if you're trying to motivate a female client to do weights in a gym environment, it's useful to understand that they're more likely to experience these anxieties that we're gonna discuss than your male clients. So you have to overcome, these are barriers to exercise that you need to overcome um, to, to help them feel motivated, to make them wanna be there, okay? Now, you gotta put their anxieties, you gotta address them, you can't just dismiss them because they're stupid in your opinion, okay? Because they're not in your client's opinion and it's their opinions that are acting as barriers for exercise. Now, in the case of female athletes, gender expectations contribute significantly to their anxieties um, and it does impact performance, okay? The influence of gender expectations is almost always negative for women, okay? They include weight pressures, um, body dissatisfaction, disordered eating. Um, the coach-athlete relationship and behaviors can impact their performance. And guess what? You're the coach. All right, you're the coach and your client is the athlete. All right, even if they're not athletic or they're not competing, they're doing exercise deliberately, that makes them your athlete. Now, as I said, sport is not quite the same as the gym. We can acknowledge though, how many of those anxieties in athletics and sports environments overlap with the kind of messaging we're seeing and we're personally selling in the fitness environment. You know, we're selling skinny, we're selling smaller, we're selling strong, we're selling um, definition and toning and get that body back and, you know, body reboots. We're doing that. And we are therefore contributing to the anxieties that women feel 
um, when it comes to embarking on a gym journey, particularly in a weights room, particularly if they don't understand why they belong, and usually in a negative way, okay? So if you're serious about motivating women to exercise, you need to throw out that messaging. Um, it's driving that anxiety, even in our elite athletes, okay? They don't feel right because our expectations are unrealistic. Um, we need to focus on said, instead on the real reasons that we need women in the weights room. You know, I can think of exercise being used as a um, preventative measure for osteoporosis and sarcopenia and frailty in old age. Um, exercise improves survivorship of certain cancers like breast cancer. Um, it can improve quality, quality of life. In women especially, it slows the onset of dementia. So we have all these reasons for women to get in the gym and exercise. We have to get past their anxieties. It's not their anxieties that are stupid. It's our messaging is off. It's off, way off. So let's do that together. As always, I welcome your feedback. We got one more installment next week. Uh, any questions, uh, direct message me. Otherwise, I'll talk to you then.